Hi folks, so in this video what we're going to be doing is completing a question here in relation to the ellipse and the parabola. It's a question that would often come up in a junior cycle graphics exam now and it is good practice here, this question here it is from the World of Graphics textbook, page 286 and it's actually a question here based on a submarine. So if I just go up to the question here it says, a submarine is shown below. It is based on an ellipse A, B, C, D. So if I just come down here and note that A, B, C, and D. So there's our ellipse. And two half parabolas P, Q, and R, S. So locate those. P to Q is one half of a parabola, and R, S is the other half. And then it says F1 and F2 are the focal points of the ellipse, which we can find down here, F1 and F2. And then it says the vertices of the parabolas are at P and S. Reproduce the diagram to the dimensions given. Include an additional detail to enhance it. Okay. Now, I'm not going to do the additional detail in this video. But what I am going to do is complete this problem here. So, breaking down. You can see here there's quite a lot of a kind of complex drawing in this. Uh, but if we break it down to its simple nuts and bolts, it's made up of one ellipse here. And we have two semi parabolas or half parabolas at either side down here at the, I suppose, the end of the submarine where the tail part would be. Okay, we're going to focus on the ellipse first of all. And we can see here that the long part of the ellipse going from A over to C is 180 millimeters. That means the major axis is 180 and the minor axis is 120 going from B down to D. And that's where we want to start off with. Okay, so that's the first thing we're going to do there. Now, on our sheet here, I'm going to start off by doing a construction line. And on that construction line, that's going to be where my major axis is. Picking a center point there, anywhere at all on the construction line. I'm going to get my compass now. And on my compass, I'm going to get a distance of 90 millimeters. The reason I'm getting 90 is because the major axis is 180, and half of 180 from the middle would be 90 for my major circle. Okay, so if the major axis is 180, the radius for the major axis is 90. So I get the distance from the middle there, out to here. I'm going to draw in my major circle using the concentric circles method. Okay, and you can see here, I just need to extend this out just a little bit there. Okay, we also have to do a minor circle. And if I refer back to the drawing, the minor circle goes from the top to the bottom in this case, from B down to D. The minor axis is 120, therefore the radius is 60. So once again, I'm going to measure from the middle. This time I'm going to measure out 60 from the middle. I'm going to draw in my minor circle. Now the minor axis is going vertical. Okay, so as you can see there, we have now drawn in our major axis, which is going from left to right and our minor axis, which is going from top to bottom. So technically I've found A, which I'm going to label here. I'll do it, I'm just thinking I'll do it right in here like that. There is B, there is C, and finally D. So I found the four points. Either end of AC is the major axis, so I'm going to note the direction of my major axis. So MAJ is going from left to right, and my minor axis is going vertical. And I'll explain in a minute why I did like that. Okay, now what we're going to do is use the concentric circles method to complete this problem. So we're actually going to split up, I often say in my class, split up the two circles into 30, 60 degrees, but we're essentially splitting them up into pizza slices. Okay, 12 pizza slices. So there is 30 degrees and 60 degrees one way. And now we're going to do 30 and 60 the other way. Now the method after this, and this is how you're going to complete any ellipse, okay, especially when it's in a horizontal position. If we just take this division line here, imagine this is where the one o'clock position is on a clock face, okay, where one o'clock would be positioned up here. Now this line, the division line, cuts through the minor circle right here. What I mean by the minor circle is the inner circle, the smaller one, and it cuts through the major circle out here, okay, on the circumference of the larger circle. Now essentially the method is where the division line cuts through the minor circle, we want to go parallel to the major axis. So where it cuts through the minor circle, our major axis is going left and right, as I've noted over here. So in this case, where it cuts through the minor circle, I'm going to go parallel to the major axis, I'm going to go right. 
on the opposite side i'm going to go left likewise anywhere else on the ellipse or sorry on the two circles the major minor circle wherever it cuts the minor circle i'm going to go left and right so if you come down here to the other division lines left and right and then finally left and right okay now wherever it cuts the minor circle we go left and right parallel to the major axis Therefore, anywhere a division line cuts the major circle, we're going to go parallel to the minor axis, MIN, and we're going to go up or down. So on the top half of the ellipse, you can see here, we're going to go down, 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 and down. And on the bottom half, we're going to go up, 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 and up. And essentially, what we're finding there is a series of points that are on our elliptical curve. I'm just gonna jot them down there. Now that we've got all those points, what we're going to do, really lightly to start off with, I'm gonna go over then near the end of the question. So there's one portion of my ellipse. I want to get the next portion. Okay, and as you can see, that's going to be my elliptical shape in there. I will heavy it in later on. Okay, so the next bit of the question, the ellipse is done there. I want to now find the focal point F1 and F2, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to draw in the circles, and then we're actually going to put in this kind of detail section here. And you can see at F1, the center point, I have a radius 12, I have a radius 12, and in the middle, I have a radius 18, okay? So that's what we're going to do now. So, to find the focal points, the method is, you're going to get half the major axis on your compass, the distance from the center of the circles, out to A, and I'm going to go to either the top or bottom of my minor axis. I go to the bottom, swing an arc to cut the major axis, and swing an arc here. Just to show you, we could have gone to the top, and it will give us the exact same results. Now, those points there are now called F1, and F2. Now that I've got those, I'm going to put in two circles, both radius 12. So using F1 as my center point, and F2 as a center point, and I also have a circle in here that has a radius of 18. So I've got 18 on my compass there now. That's just a detail. Okay, now I'm actually going to just go back here to my drawing just to check. Yep, yeah. going to actually heavy in the outside part of my ellipse. So as best I can, I'm trying to make it go, now that I've previously done the sketch, I'll try and go over it a little bit heavier. So you'll be using a pencil here. I'm obviously using a marker just to highlight it a little bit different on the screen. So going through all my points, trying to make it flow in one continuous path. So it's half the ellipse. Just, uh, okay, about three quarters of it done now. On to the last portion. And there we have it okay there's that portion of it done now just to get a little bit of detail in the heavy line going from there to there exact same at the opposite side near to here and now just using my compass I'll switch out pen put it in for the marker There is the 18. A little bit trickier now doing the 12. And there's one. 
and finally the other. Okay, that's kind of how you would be doing it obviously in a test as well because you'll be heavy in the detail then, a little bit darker once you're happy with your results. So there is kind of the body part of our submarine which we've actually drawn in there now. Now I'm going to move on to the tail portion and then finishing off the detail here at the top. So for the tail, you can see here, uh, from the centre line, the major axis which you've run across here, you can see there's a gap of seven up to here, and obviously it's seven down because it's symmetrical. And then from the edge of the ellipse, it's out 10, okay? And then our parabola is 30 long and 40 high. Okay, so to complete that, what I'm going to do is from my major axis, I'm going to extend out, and I'm going to mark up seven millimetres and down seven. So from the 10, I'm going to mark up seven and down seven. Now that I've done that, do a line across and across. And if you remember from where it hits the ellipse, we're going to measure over 10 millimeters. So there's the 10. Just make a little mark there. And then from here, it's over 30 millimeters. So there's my 30. I want to do a line up and down. And from up here then, now just make sure it's in the exact same position yeah so from up there it's over 30 and up to 40. okay so i'm going to zoom in here so you can see it a little bit better on our screen so after going here up seven so from this mark here i'm going to go over 30 and up 40 millimeters and the exact same on the bottom half down 40. okay and essentially what i'm going to do is i'm going to create two rectangles. And essentially we've got one rectangle here and one down here. Now anytime you're drawing an ellipse, or sorry, a parabola, you're going to complete it using what's called a rectangle method. So we have a parabola here, PQ, and then we have RS. So if I just label those points, this here is the vertex of our parabola, P. This is the bottom, that's Q. Then we've got R here. We've got S here. Now, we're going to draw a parabola going from P down to Q. Okay? Anytime you draw a parabola, what you're going to do is to call the rectangle method. Essentially, it's just drawn inside of a rectangle. But we're going to divide this line up into a certain number of portions. And whatever number of portions we divide this line up into, we also have to divide this line here up into an equal number. So because this is 40, it makes sense that we'll go in four tenths. Okay? So... 10, 20, 30, and obviously 40. So that line is now into four portions, one, two, three, and four. This line, because it's 30, does not divide by four equally, it would be seven and a half. So what I actually have to do is I have to divide that line up using division of lines. So from P, I'm going to do a line off at a random angle, and I'm going to measure 10, 20, 30, and 40. Because I've divided this line into four equal parts, if I connect the last point to the end of the line here, and then use sliding set squares, I can now divide this line up into four equal parts. This line from here to here is now four parts, one, two, three, and four. Now, where that line is into four parts, what we're going to do, is do a vertical line up and down like this and all these ones here I'm going to connect to P which is called the vertex and I will be able to find a series of points that are on my parabola okay so just to get those points there now P is a point in our parabola as is Q so essentially if we call it from here the very first one to the closest one in will give us a point right here the next one down to the next one out will give us a point here. Then the next one down, connected to P to the next one out, will give us another point. And you can see there, there's our three more points on our parabola. So from P, through the point, through the point, down to here. Okay, so there's our parabolic curve. Just go back out to the drawing just to make sure. Yep. Okay, so all I'm going to do now, I'm going to heavy in this portion, heavy in this, heavy in, good line from there to there, and then 
as best I can, going through all the points that I've just found. There's our parabola on one side, and rather than going through all that method again, because the parabola is symmetrical, I can just use axial symmetry to help me find the other points again. So using my compass, because the parabola is the exact same on the opposite side, it's just a mirrored version, I'm going to use this line here, the major axis line, extend it out to find the other points. So from here, up to this point right there, which I found a minute ago, that one right there, mark it down, on to the next one, mark it down, you can see I have to extend some of my lines, and then on to the last one, mark it down. And you can see here then, simply a case, extend and extend. And all I'm going to do then is draw in my parabola on the bottom half. So rather than going through all the work again, I've done the work above it, I can just use axial symmetry to replicate it. And there we have the parabola done on the opposite side. Okay, now what we have to do is just complete the final part of the question, which is the little bits of it uh, up here at the very, very tip top. So I'll just move up. There we go. Okay, just the, uh, the top bit, which I suppose is the periscope part. Okay, so from the middle, you can see here it goes 32 out to the left and 32 to the right. And then from here, it's up 16 and then 10. And that's going to kind of help us get this angular line. And from here, after we go 32 to left and right, you can see here it connects to the focal points. That's going to kind of get those angular lines right there. So that's what we're going to do first of all. So from the middle here, I'm going to measure 32 to the left. Actually do it from the line here. So from the center point, I'm going to measure 32 to the left. Or to the right, I should say, and then to the left. And using this guy as a guide, make a little mark there. And a little mark here and you can see from this point then just so happens that it's in line with the six degree line it doesn't always work out that way i'm just doing an angular line like this f2 through that point there an angular line and if you remember then just come back to my drawing it's up 16 and up 10. okay so from this point right here we're now going to do a line up and i'm going to measure 16 millimeters on that line so from 10 to 11, up there, there's 16, and I'll mark another 10 after that. So 11 up to 12, just using the measurements on the set square. So from here, line across, and from this one, a line across. Now what's helpful here is, at that point right there, and there, now we're going to go up, and up. So here we have it. So using the two focal points, let's move that off the screen there, apologies. From the focal points, I marked out 32 from the middle line here, 32 to the left to get this point, and 32 to the right to get this one. Connected those focal points through those, and then from here, or here on this side, I measured up 16, did a line across, that'll show you the cutoff points of those angular lines, and then up another 10. Okay, and it gives me that little rectangle up there. Now what we're going to do is just complete the rest of the logo. So from there, I'm going to measure up 28, 6, and 6. And you can see here from the middle, it's out 6, out 6, 12, and 8. So 28, 6, and 6 is what I'm going to start off with. So I start now, first of all, I should actually extend this line up. And I'm going to measure up 28 from here. And then 6 and 6, which would be 12, 6, 6. Okay, let's just go back to my drawing. So there's the 28, the 6 and the 6. Now I'm going to go 6 to the left, 6 to the right, 12 and 8. So from the middle, go 6 to the left, 6 to the right. Just on that a little bit first. So there's that. 
Daar. Line out. Line out. Line out. And there was six left, six right. And then it went 12 and 8. So there's the 12. Plus another 8. And I have a feeling from here then. That goes up and down. Like that. And from the middle. From in there I think it's up 14 and down 14. I'll just check. Yep. Yeah. So. Just heavy in what I can first before I do that little bit. So. There's that. That. Okay. And then. Just to show you here, so this will be going up and down like this. Not sure exactly how far just yet, I have to measure. Just bring that into the screen a bit more. From this middle line here, it's up 14 millimeters and down 14, should be 28. And you can see it there now. I can see exactly how much I have to heavy in. From there to there, there. And there you go. So I'll just zoom out there now. And there you have it, guys. There is the uh, submarine question uh, completed there from the World of Graphics page 286. Uh, an ellipse here where we had to get to two focal points to help us complete this portion of it. And we also had the parabola at the end of the submarine as well. Okay, that's that question done, guys. I hope you found that helpful.